Hi everyone, Dr. Phil Sheldon here. I want to talk to you today, or this podcast, or video cast, or YouTube, uh, about sleep. Yeah, it's a problem. Insomnia is becoming a huge problem, and it is in epidemic proportions. We keep talking about various diseases. This is Abby, by the way. You can see her. She, but last time we did a video, um, which I did on stress, there was a bark because she barked at me and I didn't tell you why and I had a few people say what was the barking that's the barking this is Abby all right so we just ignore her and talk about sleep she has no problem sleeping but she also has no problem running around the house um, so there's a lot of things we talk about being epidemic proportions but sleep is very important we don't really realize why um, we need sleep we have some idea but the research is still ongoing, but we just know it's really important. And we know that sleep deprivation, well, it's a form of torture. You can torture someone. Um, that's the way various in, in forms of war and prisoners have been under sleep deprivation to get them to, to speak and, and, and tell things. So it makes you stressed. It reduces your immune system, so your immune ability. And particularly now more than ever, we really need strong immune systems. So we need to be able to sleep. We need to be able to deal with anxiety because that was the previous video talking about stress and anxiety. Well, if you've got insomnia and you're not sleeping, then that's going to increase your risk of anxiety and depression. So they're all linked. All these things are, are interlinked and it's very important. So I've got some tips. Um, try and get more exposure to outdoor light during the day. So if you work in an office or even if you're at home, get out for a walk, walk around the block at least a couple of times to try and get more exposure. Even if it's a cloudy day, you're still going to get more exposure to light. Very, very important. Now, at night, the opposite. Reduce the light. So have your lights dimmed down. Reduce blue light. And we're talking about laptops. We're talking about smartphones. We're talking about um, notebooks, iPads. It is really bad. And we're talking about televisions, all right? So one of the worst things you can do is go to bed with your smartphone uh, and your laptop and, and be doing things in bed. Keep your bedroom as a place of sanctuary. We'll talk more about that in a moment. Now, caffeine. Reduce your caffeine. If you go to bed at 10 o'clock, for instance, if that's when you go to bed, then you really should not have any, any caffeinated drinks before 4 o'clock. 4 o'clock should be the cutoff time. That should be the last time you should have caffeinated drinks. All right? Avoid long daytime naps. So if you're not sleeping well at night, oh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll take the afternoon off, I'll try and sleep. No, a little cat nap is fine. But if you're, if you're going into long sleeps during the day, that's also very, very bad. Another tip is consistency in when you go to bed and when you get up. Try and be consistent. Even weekends, saying, oh, well, it's a weekend and I'll have a lay in. Try and keep roughly to the same time when you go to bed and when you wake up. I know sometimes it's difficult, you might be going out, you might be at a party, you know, there might be events, whatever, but try and be consistent, all right? Now, a nightcap, oh, I'll have a, a glass of wine, I'll have a, a brandy, a cognac, uh, whatever, as a nightcap, that'll help you sleep. In fact, it doesn't. In fact, it has a contrary effect. So do not have alcohol before you go to bed, all right? That should really be uh, at least three or four hours before you go to bed if you're going to have a glass of wine with your dinner that's fine but don't give yourself uh, a nightcap thinking that's going to help you sleep in fact what it does is it reduces the melatonin within your brain that's a thing i didn't mention melatonin maybe speak to your doctor or someone a health professional even speak to the chemist about melatonin um it is available in many countries just going into a pharmacy and buying it. It's not available in Australia, but you are allowed to bring it in legally uh, online from reputable companies. Um, and you really only need about three milligrams, but your doctor can also prescribe it. So maybe if you're having chronic insomnia problems, speak to your doctor about prescribing some melatonin, but don't, don't bother with the homeopathic melatonin that you can buy in the uh, health food stores and chemists. It really won't do anything. Make your bedroom a place of sanctuary, all right? Make it somewhere that the temperature's right. You want to keep the temperature cool. You don't want it more than about 18, 20 degrees maximum, all right? It needs to be a coolish place. Even in hot weather and cool weather, you need to keep it consistent. Um, don't watch the TV. Don't have the TV on. 
have nice, low, soft lights. Um, all these things are really important. Make sure you've got a comfortable pillow. You know, maybe buy a mattress topper, uh, which are quite cheap to make your mattress softer if you find that, that it's too expensive to buy a new mattress. So make your place comfortable. Have nice sheets, you know, keeping yourself in a, in a comfort. And keep your bedroom tidy, all right? It's very difficult to go to sleep in a messy, awful bedroom. So that's another thing. I know it sounds boring. Oh, I've got to tidy my bedroom to help me sleep. But yes, cleanliness, tidiness will help as well. Okay, take time to wind down in the evenings. I would suggest turn the television off half an hour before you go to bed. So if you go to bed at 10, turn the television off. Don't use your any phones. Don't do anything. Half an hour before 9.30, just listen to some soft, relaxing music. You know, just calm yourself down before you go to bed. Um, avoid late night eating. That's another big problem. People have a late night snack thinking that's the way to go. No, it's bad for you. In fact, it's better to eat as early as possible. So try and eat as early as possible. Uh, a warm shower before you go to bed would be excellent. And avoid liquids at least four or five hours. So cut back on your liquids because you don't want to be up all night going to the toilet. That's another thing that's going to wake you up. So if you're drinking too much liquid before you go to bed, then you're going to have a full bladder. Try and empty your bladder before you go to bed and make sure you do. And exercise is wonderful for you, but don't exercise too late at night, all right? Exercising late is also not good for you because it overstimulates your hormones. So there's some tips. Try and get a good night's sleep. And if you have chronic problems, speak to your doctor. There, there, there might be something like sleep apnea. You could be suffering from a... Uh, an illness, a medical complaint. So don't battle on and struggle on. There is help out there if you suffer chronic insomnia. There's a lot of things that can be done and there's a lot of research into it. So have a good night's sleep and I hope my tips help you.